Hey, welcome to JG3 Reviews. My name is James. I like to share with you fountain pens, ink, paper, all that good stuff. And today I want to share with you a fountain pen ink. Now this is a Jinhao ink, which is new to me. I had not had a lot of experience with Jinhao inks other than in cartridges. And not too long ago, I bought a few bottles of various colors. And this is the green bamboo ink. Great color. It has some strengths. It has some weaknesses. So we're going to go over those as we do an ink test. We'll see how it performs on various papers. We'll do a chromatography, all that good stuff. Let's flip that camera and take a look at this ink. All right, so when you get your bottle, it comes in this glass 30 milliliter bottle. That's the size that I bought from AliExpress. Nice looking bottle. It does look familiar. You'll see on Amazon from time to time, Dryden inks and pens. And from what I understand, those are likely Jinhao as well, although I cannot say that for sure about the ink. Some say that Jinhao doesn't actually make the bottled ink, but that they had that farmed out. That may be the case. If you know for certain details on that, please share those in the comments below. And as we continue to look over the bottle, you will see that it is branded with the Jinhao Chariot logo on the cap and Jinhao on the bottom of the glass bottle as well. The pens I'm going to use today are the Glass Dip Pen, previously known as the $5 Dip Pen, but you know, 2022 when I'm filming this, like everything else, it's up to seven bucks. And then I'll also be using this fountain pen, formerly known as Moon Man Now Majan S5. It is a fine steel number no. five nib and an eyedropper pen. For paper, I'll be using the Rhodia dot pad. I use this in all of my ink reviews because so many of you have and are familiar with this paper and ink performance on it to compare with. For cheaper papers, I also have this True Red Composition Notebook and the fountain pen friendly dot spiral from Walmart. This is pen gear and here is the label if you're looking for that made in India. So on the Rhodia paper, I have already written with both pens. I've got my grid here for the water test, which you notice looks like I've already started. Now that's just my ruler slipped right as I finished that last line. And well, it's a water test, so I just, I didn't redo it. Okay, so the Majan S5 is a fine nib. And what I'm gonna tell you right up front about this ink is that it is best for pens with fine and extra fine nibs, as you can see from what happened with the very wet, broad-like dip pen. With the fine Majan, you have no issues of bad feathering or anything like that. You do have just a little bit of bleed through, jumping ahead, you have a lot of bleed through on that glass dip pen. But it performed fine for the uh, Majan, except that it is a pretty, I'm gonna say a thin ink, meaning that it's it's a little runny, it, it goes through some papers pretty easily, and uh, be aware of that. It's a little paper finicky, and we're gonna see that in all of these papers. Uh, but with the fine, it actually does quite well. And with an extra fine, it does well too. With the glass dip pen, okay, this is this is freshly dipped and quite wet. And I thought I had tapped off all the excess ink, but this is still how it came out. So that was basically a, a blotchy mess. It performed a little bit differently on these other papers, as we'll see, but on the Rhodia paper, it's a bit of a blotchy mess. So I made a second attempt with the pen a little bit drier and still it's just a mess on the Rhodia paper. Now that is the ink, okay? But Rhodia paper actually is not the best behaved paper on the market. You might get that impression since it's so popular in reviews like this, but you know, I have other papers that actually do a whole lot better than Rhodia. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about that sometime. I've never actually done a Rhodia paper review testing the paper itself. Maybe I should, I should do that sometime. All right, as we get ready to do the ink swatch, let me just show you. When you open up the bottle and look at the ink, isn't that a, a nice color? And I actually really do like it. So even though it's paper finicky, I, I do really like the color of this ink. It's a first pass. And then a second pass. And do a little third right over here for overlap. As you can see from the ink splotch, it really is a pretty close match to a real bamboo. So it has a nice natural color to it that I really do like. 
Now let's do some dry time testing. Five seconds. Ten seconds. Thirty seconds. So by 30 seconds, definitely you were dry. So it's a pretty quick drying ink. Before I share with you the chromatography I did, let me just say that on the glass dip pen with it very wet and broad and, and pretty bleedy and feathery, it actually, it kind of self-chromatographied. What you see here is what we're about to see on that chromatography strip. The chromatography is what you would think, just like in the Ziploc commercial, yellow and blue, make green and there's really not much else to this. It's quite diluted and I think that's why it's thin and tends to go through the paper a bit and feather a little bit is because it is I think a, a fairly diluted ink. But you start with a very vibrant blue and then that fades out rather quickly and then you come down to this really more of a, a peachy gold end of the yellow spectrum and that's about it. All right, time for the water test. All right, let's test that water fastness. And let me tell you, before I dry this off, it's been sitting for at least three or four minutes, and I have very low expectations for any sort of water fastness, but we'll, we'll see what happens. All right, so as you can see, most of the color is on the paper towel. <laughs> I, think, I think it probably met my expectations. Well, I wouldn't depend on it for that. And really, most of what's left behind is the yellow. Most of the blue seems to be on the old paper towel over there. So how did the ink perform on the other papers? This is on the True Red Composition Notebook. And... You know, it did so-so mm, here. There's not a lot of feathering, but there is some from the fine. It, it broadened out the line of the fine. Now, this paper, I should say, is a Vietnamese paper, which generally, generally, the inexpensive notebooks I bought with Vietnamese paper perform quite well. This particular notebook from True Red has been just not quite as good. I think it's a thinner paper than the other ones that I have, and so that came true on this test as well. So the fine tended to write with a bit thicker line on this paper, and um, not bad feathering, but there is some there. On the glass dip pen, funny enough, you actually have still some blotchiness and feathering and bleed through, but not as bad as on the rhodia. It's easier to read what I wrote, and there's less of the separation of the blue and that yellowy peach color within the ink on this Vietnamese paper than was on the rhodia paper. You did have, of course, quite a bit of bleed through and ghosting. And then we get still a different performance here on the pen gear dot grid spiral. And that is that in the fine pen, you actually have a little bit crisper line than the true red paper. And you get a little bit of shading. But on the glass dip pen, you have about the same width of line. There is still some blotchiness and feathering. But you actually do see some color variation because of the separation of the blue and the yellow on this paper that you did not see on the uh, Vietnamese paper. The pin gear, by the way, is made in India. But where this paper comes through is that you don't have nearly the level of bleed through, even from the glass dip pen. You have a, a little blotch that came through right here. The rest of this, this whole line, it looks maybe in the camera like there's bleed through. There's none. That's all ghosting. There's only bleed through right here and uh, almost right here, even with the fine nib right there. But this paper, it actually seems to like. So my overall impression of the ink is color-wise, I really like it. Uh, its behaviors, it's really paper finicky. So be careful on that. And if you were going to use it, use it in a fine or extra fine pen. I, I will probably never put it in a nib any broader than that. But I do enjoy the color and the price was fine. So I'm, I'm not disappointed in the ink at all. I just have to pay attention to where I use it. All right. God bless you. And don't forget to like and subscribe because I've got more reviews on the way.